we uh, start sampling. I see everyone has the name tag, so that works. Right, Julia? Everyone has the name tag. He said otherwise you guys are buying the snacks. <coughs> so whoever doesn't have the name tag will be buying the snacks, right? So we, we have, um, as, as uh, we had mentioned last week, that we are going to have every week, we are going to have a speaker. Um, today is the uh, first one that we have uh, on the list. Uh, <clears throat> the first half is going to be the speaker. The second half, we'll do the presentation, right, Ron? Yes. For the first yes, for 20 minutes and then we'll discussion. Right. And then we'll open to discussion. And then we'll cover some of the things for next class this week. So that way at least you, you all are to see. Before you do the introduction, I think everybody's looking for this. They didn't get it. So if you, we, what we handed out was Satish's presentation. If you don't have it, how many of you don't have this? Okay, so mostly here. Anybody else? Okay. Anybody can pass it to us. Alex, did you need your buying is snacks, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we had for after the break my lecture notes, which you can take later, but uh, I can manage now if you like, which is a brand portfolio yeah, strategy. Okay. If you need that, uh, quickly at the back. Anyone else? So, sorry, these are all electronically also posted, but my experience is that you prefer us to print, uh, but if you don't, uh, I'm happy to post it. What do you guys prefer? Tell us once and we'll do that. How many prefer us to print? Yeah. I think that dominates. So. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> it is both. It is always online. Yeah. Yeah. It's always online. So it's, yeah. it's always online the day of or the day before. So don't send us email the week before saying why I'm not there. Yeah. So um, one other thing I would say that you know most of these case studies that you hear, these are all confidential. It's not public information yet, so you gotta keep it that way. Um, public companies have certain um, obligations, so uh, keeping that in mind, just uh, keep it to yourself. Uh, let me now let me introduce our uh, speaker, um, Satish Korde. Uh, Satish is the uh, global uh, client director, um, but let me give you a little bit on a personal level. Um, I've known Satish for a long, long, long time, and if I give you the timetable, you, I'll age myself. You will know how old I am. Right? Um, but he was also at with the company, one of the companies that I worked at, uh, Young and Rubicam. He was the youngest research director in that company. So, one of the things we were talking about, how do you grow in an organization? I think he became uh, the uh, head of research, which is in you know, the top two or three people in the company at the age of what, 28, 29, something like that. Not that, not that. So, or 30. So I do remember an article written by you on that. So uh, what, the reason why I'm re bringing that up, ask him a question on how you can really grow in an organization and what do you have to do if you want to grow uh, really fast in an organization. Right? But to give you, uh, give you a little bit of his background, he's the global client director for WPP companies. He uh, basically manages all the global businesses that WPP has. Uh, what that means is his day job is Ford Motor Company, so he manages and Ford spends more than a billion dollars, it's a public information, so I can say that, uh, more than a billion dollars in, in marketing. That all goes through the team, the group that he, he runs, that is called Team Detroit. Team Detroit is based in, uh, in um, uh, Detroit, 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 right next to uh, right next to Ford Motor Company. But they also have a global uh, footprint, and, and uh, I'm sure he will talk about how globally they manage. But that's one element of it. So this also manages all of the major uh, global clients of. Um, WPP like HSBC and um, uh, I know I'll forget some. Uh, Kimberly Clark, I know you are very close to it. Colgate, you are very close to that. So all all of the uh, major CPG uh, companies, the globally that they have, uh, Satish manages that, 
And uh, one of the things which I want to mention that uh, came from Young and Rubicam, which was, uh, you know, which is a large agency at one time, got acquired by WPP, and that's the uh, way WPP got uh, you know, expanded. WPP was acquired multiple companies, about 400 plus companies uh, in uh, 10, 15, 20 years time frame. And all these companies had their own culture and everything uh, of their own. So think about in integrating all that company, <coughs> particularly uh, Satish did one of those things was the integration of these resources, at least five or six different companies together to really bring solution to uh, the clients that is for motor company. So with that, I'll turn it over to you and then uh, hopefully we'll ask you some tough questions that you're not able to answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ford 
if you realize 166,000 employees, you know, huge company, global company, factories everywhere in the world, not everywhere in the world, but many, many parts of the world. Ford Credit is one of the biggest banks you can do business with. And uh, it's just a, but when all that ball talks to comes in Russia, move a company of that size takes forever. And think about it, when, you, when I ask you to change, say you're going to get up at 6 tomorrow instead of 5. So why? And it takes so much effort. Think about moving this big ship you know, in a different direction. So it was a massive, massive transformation, more than anybody could uh, imagine. So it's a very well-known brand. So I'm talking about the last five years now. It's about 07 to 12. My involvement with Ford, let me see a little bit more. I, I have an office at Ford. <coughs> so I sit with the Ford management. And even though technically I'm a communications guy, I participate with them on a lot of other issues. Uh, and it's fun because I learn about the company in a way which many of us don't learn about the client. I'm part of the client team and uh, puts a little bit more responsibility. Like I said, when in the old days, when I said, why can't you change the color of the car? And it just costs so much money and so much effort. And all those things, you have to know about your clients. So I don't know how many of you are going to service business. And when you talk about your clients, make sure you understand their business in the way they understand their business. Because too often in the advertising world, it's about I'll just know the consumer side of the business. That's not enough. You have to learn the other side of the business just as well so you know what to tell the consumer. So being at Ford, really, I, I have that advantage of <coughs> literally sitting with them, talking to them all day, feeling their anxieties, feeling their gains and pains in a very different way versus sitting in Madison Avenue and just saying, here are some ideas you might want to consider. So it was a, it's, it's a different perspective I have. But it's a, it's a company which was known for trucks in 05, 06. How many of you are Ford? <laughs> right for Now, why don't you have Ford? How many of you have cars? Your own car. OK, lot of you. Why not Ford? Yep. Long-term reliability. Long term, when was the last time you went to the website to check the library? I bought my car four years ago. Mm. So it was when Alan Wally started this yeah. effort, but before some of the newest models came out. Okay, so reliability. Any, I, mean, well, I think going along with that, um, American cars in general will just have a bad reputation for reliability, so I didn't even look at American cars. So that's Who has a Toyota? Why did you buy a Toyota? Um, yeah, last, relatively cheap. Cheap? So just Toyota really cheap? That's true. Boring? Yeah, <laughs> you know. You know. Yeah, so I'm the Ford guy, so you, <laughs> <laughs> so you bought it for cheap reliability. Were you a Ford guy before you were working? I have been a Ford guy too long, and I've been working with the company for so many years, but I'll come to that story a little later. But keep that in mind about your client's products, okay? We should deal with that. So yes, I've, I've, no, I used to work in Oldsmobile at one time, believe it or not, in our agency, and I didn't have an Oldsmobile at that time. The last 15 years, I've been working with Ford. So any, other, any of these reasons? I had a Ford Explorer, and I wanted something smaller that wasn't a gas pedal. So, did you think about the scale? I guess I look like non-American cars. You look like non-American Kelly, why did you buy a Ford? <laughs> I mean, you, I'm delighted you bought a Ford. Uh, you made a mistake. It's my... <laughs> <laughs> you made no, a mistake. It's, it's worse than that. It's my fiance's car from college that okay. came up here to die with me. So... <laughs> It's, so it's a 2001 gas guzzler. Now, what is the measure of my success today? And how many people think about four at the end of the class? That's the measure of my success today. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're not that different from many, many of the Americans. You know, the gas guzzler, middle-aged cowboy, known for trucks. When it comes to trucks, I, I don't know, any of your trucks? No, certainly. You, 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 
if you if you're buying a truck, you look at that one here. Uh, one, it was good in the old days, not keeping up with the, with the times. You know, and a lot of bad things happened. Some were mistakes, some were perceptions. And known for actually the value when you look at you know, the five, six era, right? there's a lot of, a lot of price being in the world actually because no one is cheap. So uh, with that background came Alan Mulally. Many of you have read about Alan, if you read Fortune. Now rated as the business person of the year, 30 most respected CEOs. This is not talking about just before the downturn. The downturn hasn't yet started. The signals all over what's going to come, but nobody really knows what's going to come. Uh, I, I have the pleasure of meeting Alan frequently. He's an absolutely delightful person. Very, very sharp. Very, very sharp. Uh, and he came up with, uh, I mean, he did many things, and I'll, I'll just rattle off some of them. I don't know if you can read the chart, but one of the things that he did, I mean, he came in and you might have read it in the Wall Street Journal, he mortgaged all the assets, needed money. So, well before the term, even the whole was mortgaged, you know, there's a value to the whole, uh, whole brand. Sold Taurus, no, brought back Taurus, because Taurus was renamed 500 by another round of management. He said Taurus is a good name, to so bring it back. Those are some of the first things they did. He said we're going to sell off all other assets. We sold off Aston Martin, we sold off Land Rover, Jaguar, and more recently Volvo. So, make some very bold decisions which were going against the grain of previous managers. Decided to bring European cars. I don't know if they've seen Fiesta, Focus, some of these are European cars. So start making the company global in its own way. Reduce the platforms. A lot of costs in the platform. Uh, I think in 09, he decided not to take money from the government. Of course, not the same decision. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And then uh, bought back debt with an amazing had an amazing deal. So the port's cash position now is absolutely perfect. The ratings have gone up from almost a junk status. Uh, so he did a lot of things. But how did this all happen? That, that's what's more important. He had a very simple business philosophy called one for five. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like we are all card sharing members. I hope I have it. We're all the million dollars of the world company. It's very simple. It's all in one, one card. And it's, it's a complete family of cars and trucks. Best in class. Full system quality, green, safe, and smart value. Safe, smart is technology. Ford, by far, is the leader in technology. You may not know that. Whether it's sync or whether it's uh, a lot of, you might have read some articles, how you can get connected to the hospital and everything. Ford is absolutely in the need because they have made a commitment. By the way, the quality is outstanding, even though it got a little dumped because of the sync problem, the my touch Ford problem, because some of the folks think that the reliability is very high. The resale value right now is as good as terror. A lot of things have happened in the last few years. But he accelerated, they didn't cut any product programs. So on one side, he sold off the companies, but financed the billions of dollars needed to develop a product. Very smart move on his part. And he believes we should have great products, strong business, which will make a better world. And if you have any doubts about it, you should talk to Alan directly, and you will see how committed he is to the better world concept. And you know, sometimes people say, oh, it's easy for him to say, no, 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 it's not that easy to say, because you put it in action. As a, put these things into action is not easy. You see the commitment of the miles per gallon for emissions which Ford's making global. These are real actions, it's not talk. Also, he came from Kansas, where he, you know, middle class family. Uh, he's an engineer. Boy, he was not a car guy. 
And when you look at all the things, he really means it. And this mantra, this one form, is a way of life at work. That's one thing you cannot challenge him. You can challenge him about product, strategy, bit, but when it comes to one form, that's it. We're all going to behave as one company against one plan. One of them. Uh, just as a background, how yeah. long, but then after he joined the board, did he get to this uh, synthesizer, to this business strategy? Within a year, he had it. And a lot of things were happening before him which were correct, but he just distilled it and made it so simple that there's a purpose in life, there's a purpose before. Have you heard the story about uh, uh, the janitor at NASA? I don't know if they happen or not, it's a great story. <laughs> a reporter asked the janitor in NASA in the 60s, what, what was his job? And he says, to put a man on the moon. Now that sense of purpose, his job is not to clean. That's what he does to get the man on the moon. The whole family of NASA engineers, the NASA employees, were all committed to getting the man on the moon. And this is the kind of thing Alan has managed to do with this huge, huge company. That there's a sense of purpose. We are not losers. We are winners. And we're going to do it because we have a plan and we're going to work together. You know, it came uh, Jim Farley. He's uh, one of the smartest people I've met. He came from Canada. But his grandfather used to work at Ford. So Ford was very near and dear to him. And if you read, read about Jim, uh, he's also an engineer in the MBA. Toyota Marketing launched, uh, was in very, had launched Lexus and then launched Scion. So he was very, very involved in Ford, ever in car business, car marketing. He's a car guy. He's as good a product guy as any engineer. Now, just look at the advantage he has. He can literally build a car from scratch. Mm -hmm. So the commitment to the product, the old commitment to work, and being a smart marketer gives him a huge advantage. On top of it, he's extremely smart and, and dedicated. And that's when the marketing transformation started. So if you will, we have a brand manager now called Alan Malawi. So think about how we don't start a meeting without talking about the brand first. What is a brand? What do you guys think? What is a brand in general? What's yeah, in general, brand? what's a brand? It's a set of promises and attributes. I think, I think it's everything. I think it's the most important thing that a company has. It's the reason that people buy more than the specifics of the product. It's the associations that the consumer has with a particular company um, and the beliefs that they take to a particular company. Yeah, I was going to say a company's character. Um, by, by I think all of you are right. <coughs> but it cannot be an intellectual. Hi, you just upgraded your That's Android phone. When you make it an intellectual exercise, it evaporates. It has to be in the gut. You have to feel the brain. When is the contract with the consumer? You cannot violate. When is the contract, contract with your employees? You cannot violate. It's a contract with the dealers in this case. With the government in this car industry, with the commission company. It is something that's in bargain. When you violate the brand contract, the brand comes. It's disaster. This was it can't be an intellectual exercise somewhere up there in ether. Where we go through, so I've done my segmentation work and I now know what the gaps are doing. It has to be right here where it hurts or feels good when you do it. And that's what Alan and Jim brought to the party. Brand was not something which kind of is a game. It is what we are. And Alan and Jim and Mark Fields and some of these people just made brand the focus of all the activities. And that's what that's the biggest transformation a marketeer would want. Because that's at the heart of the transformation. 
Now, Jim comes in. He's, a, he's an absolute risk taker. He's, a, I guess, he's the smartest human being I've met. He's a car guy. But a, and he has more ideas than anybody else does. But they are all well thought of ideas. And a little bit on our side, WPP, because uh, I think Martin came to the class here. Is it? No, he didn't come to the class, but he had a leadership. So, uh, we are a big company, about 100,000 plus of people, have a whole, many, many different offerings. And there were like 14 different companies that used to work on the board of global. And Martin, WPP acquired companies. So, when Young and Rubicon was acquired in 2001, to sometime in that space. Ford Motor Company made a request. A request went from a client. It's like a mandate. If you know what the request is, a mandate is. <laughs> so they made a demand that you will work as one company on our behalf, or else you don't want to know. But I think once that was said, and that's how I kind of got appointed in the WPP lead on Ford Business. So, now, you would be amazed at how difficult it is to make people work together when we have been competing with each other for years and years. Probably JWT, Wilder, Mindshare, Media, we all fought with each other. All of a sudden we're part of one family and the biggest client has made a mandate that you will work together or else you don't want to know. So this will happen before, before I will. So we created a joint venture, which is what's called as Team Detroit. Of, so we act as one unit, but we have access to all of WPP. So we did not want to create one agency. Those of you who have dealt with agencies, so we didn't want to create a standalone office. You know, but that's how it feels. We wanted to create an office which functioned more as a portal. So we have access to all of WPP and we access all of non-WPP companies when appropriate. And that's the promise we made before, especially when Alan and Jim came on board. And that's what we try to deliver on our side. So this is a partnership which was created at a very high level of agreement between the teams. And when we live it, we know it. It's the same thing on our side. We made a promise. And <clears throat> we feel we are delivering it. And we have to deliver it every day in the client business. It's not what you did yesterday. What are you going to do for me tomorrow? That's what matters. And so, we, so, but this is what, who we are. And the, like I say, Ford has access to 110,000 employees, basically, of WPP. And it's the biggest thing in the relationship we have. And we try to do our best to give them our very best. And like I said, from outside the world when uh, it's not within WPG family. OK? With me? So now comes Jim Farley. And we, we look at the data. And like, not that we hadn't looked at, looked at the data before. But we've seen some gaps. And so they're sitting way up there. And our brand is just not like and favorable opinion are. So we follow the funnel in the automotive industry, the situation of awareness is it all that. The favorable opinion was just not high enough. And we had good products and even better products were going to come within the next two, three years. And we made a decision not to make a brand promise. Because we felt it would be too early. We had to prove ourselves. It's too easy to make a to go on air and say, we will produce the highest quality product. So first you produce the highest quality product, prove the fact that you've got the highest quality product through third party evaluation. And then we have the right to make the brand promise because in the past we have failed on our brand promise. So we came up with an idea which is called as Drive One. And basically, the, what, we, what we knew is when people got in our car, they liked the car. Because they were well-built cars. And we decided to challenge the people. So come drive one. And what we did, rather than creating lots of glitzy, fancy advertising, we had real people, engineers, Telling their story. That's what we did. That's 
one level you can say, oh, boring. That's not what happened. People started listening to the story. Then one of the most fascinating things I did with my creative team is I went and interviewed some of the engineers. And the stories you heard, these guys are sitting in the bottom of the company, in this huge company, they have so much to tell us. Unbelievable stories. One, one doctor who said, uh, I decided to work in Ford Motor Company. He invented this inflatable seat with the sun down in an accident. And he wanted to have an impact on a broader scale. So he decided to join Ford Motor Company. Now, there were tens of hundreds of those stories all over in the company, which were improving the Ford Motor Company's health. So we just basically talked to people and we told their stories, consumer stories, employee stories, as to what they were doing to improve the quality of the product. And it caught on. The real people, real, uh, uh, literally very real people. And it, it was unbelievable because people <coughs> said, something else so boring. But is it really boring if you're in the car market? to know what is happening in the car. I mean, it's the second biggest purchase after your house. To know what's happening at a car company. So we did that. And uh, I'm going to run a video at this point. Let me see if I can. I don't know if you do it. I'm going to drive from here. I'm going to make sure you need to this one. Not so long ago, the automotive industry was in trouble, and while Ford avoided the bailouts, bankruptcies, and recalls that plagued others, it was still in dire need of help. Losing market share for 14 straight years, it was perceived as irrelevant, an overlooked truck and Mustang company that brought to mind Cowboys and Joe Lunchbox stereotypes. Ford needed a dramatic makeover. In response, we created the One Ford Plan, refocusing the brand on four core pillars, smart, green, safe, and quality. But how could we make people hear about it if they weren't listening to Ford? We did it by giving Ford a new voice, the voice of the people. In everything we did, our Drive One campaign featured real people telling their real Ford stories. Our real people were quickly repositioned Ford as a company that gets it, with a wide range of products that shouldn't be ignored. But a whole new challenge arose with the latest round of the Drive One campaign. Several years of testimonial work had built up the momentum for Ford, but with the automotive category no longer making headlines, we needed to find a fresh idea to keep positive attention on the brand. We once again turned to the voice of real people, only this time we added a big layer of surprise. This time our national TV brand campaign celebrated real Ford owners by making them the unsuspecting star of a post-game style press conference, all set up just for them. Here's how it worked. How are you? Kristen? What do your friends think of your car? They think it's cool. Well, what did they say about it? Uh, that it's cool. Okay. <laughs> does your focus match your personality? Yes, it does match my personality. It's very classic, it's funny, it's quirky, it's sleek, it's shiny, it's practical, and it's smart. <laughs> We ended up with a wealth of spots. Turns out, passionate Ford owners couldn't wait to tell us what they loved about their new Ford vehicles. Owners gushed about all of the details, both large and small, that Ford has been paying attention to. Whenever I was filling up with gas before, I'd have a scowl on my face. The technology of the EcoBoost is what they've done absolutely right. We wanted a hybrid. We wanted, didn't want it to look like a hybrid. And the Ford hybrid was fantastic for that. And we didn't stop there. This authentic, real people voice supported the key Ford pillars well beyond our national TV brand campaign, appearing throughout our advertising, across Ford brands and across mediums. The Ford Retail Swap Your Ride campaign featured real competitive owners who test drove a Ford vehicle for a week. The latest Fusion campaign featured real competitive owners surprised by an impromptu newscast, during which they were told the latest headlines about the Ford Fusion. A huge part of our reveal for the completely reinvented Explorer, called Explorer Live, featured dozens of video responses to questions real people had asked about the new Explorer via Facebook. And we continue to grow our programs that take the vehicles directly to the people. Drive One for Your School again took Ford vehicles to schools, where people could test drive Ford vehicles, and in doing so, raise money for their school. Year after year, our real Ford owners continue to build a convincing case for more and more people to get behind the wheel and drive one. What would you say to a friend who's skeptical about buying a Ford? I'm going to borrow my keys.
things could have gone south. Yeah, the industry could have gone to eight, eight million units, you know, and who knows what next. So at the peak of the downturn from 17 to 9, 9 and a half, Ford decided not to take the money. The minute we had done it, within weeks we moved it out of the right track. The consumer support was overwhelming. Now, as a team in Detroit, one of the things we can do easily is we're not competing for dollars. Like if you're as you become brand managers, you have an advertising company, you have a public relations company, you have a direct marketing company, you have a website company. Here we all, we do everything for them. So we just shifted the money to public affairs. But that's what it was all about. The consumers were really doing the talking for us. The news media, the coverage we got, no advertising could have done, <laughs> come close to that. So we just pull back in advertising, put the money in public affairs, let the dealers and the consumers do our talking for us. And so we were so we were going from drive one to drive two to drive three, and now we felt the time had come to kind of take the brand promise, make the brand promise, if you will, that works for all the public. A lot of things happen simultaneously, but before I do that, I want to show you one more example. This is what happened. At the very low, we were, you can see the share growth, the favorable opinion growth, our product line of this phenomenal. It was just everything is great. And this just confidence was growing. We launched Fiesta, which is a small little car, not known in the US. Ford's reputation is among SUVs and all of that. We wanted to get people to know Fiesta. Have you seen a Fiesta in YouTube? Mm -hmm. Have you been on the YouTube to see the Fiesta movement? Uh, let's look at it. the movement, these are the five reasons why you should pick me to be one of your drivers. Oh, I know my life just sounds so fun, but it's not there without my four Fiesta. Yeah. 
tennis in their face, they're filming themselves in the face, they're in waiting. They couldn't, I mean, they did, and they posted it all. That was the whole game. They, they had to. Talk a little bit about the decision to do this and the worry that if they write negative comments, given that you lose control and the drivers. Tell us a little bit about what went to that. I think, again, Jim was the architect of this thinking, not the idea, it's the idea. We had confidence in our product. That's the number one thing. And yes, some negative stuff did get written. That's okay. That's part of the game. One thing, once you... Jim made a fundamental decision. If you're gonna, this was about the time when you know, we sat down and we said, we don't transfer the brand to the consumer. They own it. Let's put it into play. <laughs> you know? And it came with the confidence in the product that we could actually turn over the product to them. They can buy anything they want. They can say anything they feel like. We had no control over what they were posting. We were just encourage, encouraging them to post. They were not bribed or anything like that. All they had in the car for a few months later. And every month we gave them a mission, adventure, or whatever they would do. We had no control over what. So it's a calculated risk thing. More and more, we, and that's where Jim is very involved in product development. Product development is very committed, committed to doing the best product. So we, we just said we have to take that risk. And in this case, to generate this kind of brand awareness, how, much, how many millions in advertising? Any guess? 70, 80, something like that. We did it maybe with zero media spend, but we incurred some costs doing the cars over and over, a few million dollars. But it was an unbelievable marketing exercise for us to have to launch a car. We used to call it pre-launch, and then we realized we'd actually launched the car. We weren't doing a pre-launch. The car wasn't available in dealerships, but it was a really launch, and it was a, it was a big success. So, uh, you know, Satish, I have a question for you on that, right? So you, you guys started a year before uh, the car launch. Yep, a year before. Were you afraid that it would peak before the car gets uh, uh, gets on the ground? Because normally, pre-launch or launch doesn't go on for that long. I think given that it was a new nameplate, so sometimes you worry about existing nameplate and the new nameplate for this thing. But we just said we were starting with from zero, there's little to lose. And also the feeling that launching, when you show the car at an auto show, which is what we do year two years ahead of time. In effect, you've launched it. It's on the web. So why are we now ashamed of telling people what we're doing? So yes, there's that risk, but so far, I've not found it. I think it's a... Uh, well, that's an interesting point you made, which is you would, you would have worried more about when you go one of your big, high-selling brands to... But we're doing it now, and uh, you know, one, one point I want to end on running out of time, a couple of points. Where did this original idea come from? Then I come to that. It came from China. So we are one team. Now it wasn't this idea that China was executing. But Jim and I were reviewing in Shanghai looking at the Chinese book. Now China has an interesting situation. The advertising on the channels is monitored. You can't say anything. The government completely controls what goes to the communist country, despite who controls the world? Bloggers. So you work with the bloggers to get your message across. Every 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 uh, advertiser. That's, uh, that's an interesting thought. What can we do about it here? So we get a team of youngsters like yourself to get, oh, what can we do about it? They came up with this idea. All they needed was 100 cars. That was the cost to get from Europe refitted to the US specs because uh, it was ahead of time. So they had to all, each was done by hand. We couldn't run it in the factory, right? Because you know, I, a year ahead of time. So, and we are doing this more and more. I mean, which country do you think is most innovative with mobile phones? China. No? India. India. Mobile phones are computer. And once they get the smartphones, that's what's going to happen there. They, they can't afford a computer, many other people. But if they can get this cheap enough, and they're doing it, this is the new computer for them. And they're creating applications, which are fascinating. But despite our belief that we do everything here, the world's changing. 
And because of this relationship, which is global, we are able to mine ideas from all over. Also break down the not invented here syndrome, which is one of the biggest factors in there. But that's the new one, one four, and one WPP, if you will. That's our promise to it. But it's, it's amazing. And again, Jim and I were reviewing Indian work in Sitting in Delhi, and they were showing some numbers. You know, media guys were showing some credit. <laughs> they talked to me about the mobile phone. What's happening? So we then got some other clients in. Nokia and some of our other clients, non convenient He said, no, it's not fast anymore. It's going to happen. Just think when the smartphone gets everywhere in India. It's going to change the. Can you give us what percent, what percentage of time or money your um, team spends on promoting the Ford brand versus a specific type of car? Everything is one. You don't make the dis distinction that there's a brand campaign and the. So when there's a launch, there's more money spent on the launch, but the launch has to give something to the brand. Remember the formulas? <coughs> Green, safe, quality. It has to. We will not move away from that. Let's give. And it's the same team working on both. And same teams are working on it. Yes. So how do you sort of reconcile um, sort of maintaining that like Ford tough like micro image with this new like young hip? Okay. In, the, in the car business, you have two different tiers of communications going on. One is what we call tier one, and the tier two is dealer managed, all dealer oriented. So micro is we are working with the dealers. And if you see the tonality is the same. That's what we have achieved. It's all about consumers. Still, you know, Swap Your Ride is actually Mike Rowe campaign. But it's all about consumers. So we have managed to get dealers. Dealers participate with us. I, mean, I didn't go through the whole process of it. Dealers work with us in all the campaigns. They get very nervous when you do a PS campaign. Oh my god, are you going to hand over the product? What if? And I want to show you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to show you one more campaign of taking risks. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, then we can open it up for. Uh, so there's Focus, which we launched a whole new Focus. And uh, uh, it was a global campaign, and I won't go into that. At the tier one level, it was a global campaign, but a lot of the internet activities are very local. And it was a brand, Focus was, had lost its edge, and we wanted a brand new Focus to be launched, and we did lots of things. But when you have, when you're confident, you can do some very interesting, and board management was scared that we did this. They literally said, oh my god, this is a step too far. Because any of you who have seen Doug knows what Doug says and does. On the bed. It's not all kosher, you know. <laughs> he blurts, he does all kinds of things. <laughs> so this, uh, sure. When people shopped for small cars, they didn't shop for the Focus. Most, especially the young, socially connected types we wanted to talk to, thought of the Focus as a tin can, or worse, didn't think about it at all. The only ones talking about it were the haters. We start a conversation with them about the all new 2012 Focus. Who could convince them this small car from Ford was worth a look? They knew this audience wouldn't listen to your typical corporate spokesperson. So we collaborated with writers and directors from shows like The Office and The Simpsons to create funny, entertaining content that would actually get people talking positively about the Focus. My name is Doug, I'm a hero. Uh, through a series of uh, viral videos, the world has seen that. Uh, I'm kind of an amazing guy. And I mean, I, I, that, I know that sounds braggy to say, but I've seen the videos myself, and it kind of proves it. I saw a bunch of videos on the internet uh, starring uh, this guy, uh, Doug, uh, who was um, uh, saving lives and, and performing CPR and, and, and all these uh, amazing feats. And I thought, you know, this is someone Ford uh, should be in business with. So I, I talked to my bosses, and they... Um, uh, uh, and they said, no, that's a really terrible idea. And I, I, I said, no, I think we really ought to follow through with this. And they said, seriously, John, get out of our office. And I said, hear me out, guys. We have no other ideas. And that's when they finally said, okay, let's go ahead. <laughs> to keep people engaged, we release new videos each week and help drive traffic to those videos through relevant online placements and partnerships. 
We dedicated a team of writers to Doug and John's Facebook and Twitter pages. And because fans became so hooked, those writers had to respond in character almost 24-7. Media coverage of Doug also helped to generate buzz throughout the campaign. And as his reach expanded, we noticed people were confiding in Doug more and more, and actually started to ask him more questions about the focus. In response, we continued to create videos that incorporated more of the car and its high-tech features. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do what I like. I'm going to let my freak flag fly. Because I was hired to be a personality. A personality I most certainly am. No freak flag. Car! Make me a sandwich! Well, that was something that makes sense. Oh, that kind of was specific. Car, uh, club sandwich, e easy on the mail. You're going to pour one. That's oh. right, interactive. Yeah. Interactive. This is like a wet t-shirt contest? Or? What? It, it might end up being Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at Handles really well. Handles really well. Let's talk more about that. Let's talk about handling. You, you get me? See, there you go. There you go. Hands free. So let's see that hands free. Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Put it in the car. And, and the back that thing up. Gee, I love small cap. It makes me. Oh! You are not LOLing at all! A lot of ladies writing in saying they want to marry me, <laughs> saying they want to have babies with me. <laughs> Please save them. Listen to text! Your mom likes hobbits. <laughs> in the midst of all the entertaining, we put a spotlight on our 2012 focus and the Ford brand in a fresh, innovative way. Causing fans not only to become advocates for Doug, but also to become advocates for the Focus. Some even going as far as saying they bought a Focus because of him. All proof that you should never, ever underestimate a puppet. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Are you, are you tagging me? No, I'm trying to stop you. Oh. How do I do that? Before we send you off the car here, I'm going to go over some of the features with you. Good idea. All right. So we're going to start by going over Sync, which is my Ford Touch technology here. And there's three ways you can operate it. Um, the touch screen right here. Or if that doesn't work for you, you can, of course, press one of the uh, commands here on the steering wheel. You can voice activate. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. did, I, did I do it? Well, um, you, can't, you can't voice activate the car. There is a really great button. Oh, turn it on! There, it well, there's actually a button right here. If your key is in your pocket, you can just hit it and the car will turn on. So it's not quite the same as saying go. But other things are you can voice activate your phone book. Uh, phone book, go! Well, like, and voice. Oh, sorry. Phone book, go! More specifically, like somebody in. Your My phone book, go! Uh, well, you have to choose somebody. To Friends, go! Let her finish. Yeah. Let her finish. Fair, fair. Like one person in particular, a friend or a family member. Friend! Well, a particular friend is what she's saying. Well, right. Family member. No, a. Wow. So another nice feature with Sync, my Ford Touch technology here, is that you can have your text read out loud to you. I'm fighting the temptation to say text go. Should I continue to fight that? Fight yes. That. Fight yes. That. Okay. okay. It's, it's hard. Right? There's double French stitching on these seats. Ooh, Very la, la. Nice compared to the single French stitch. Yeah, beautiful. Well, how many times have I sat in single French stitch seats and mm -hmm. said? I might as well be at the town dump sitting on garbage cans. Exactly. The double is where it's at. The seats heat up. Ooh. Right. Ooh, that heat up. That's always nice. I, right. I like being Oh, I think it's really nice. nice. What? What? I'm, so, I'm agreeing with stuff. I do, too, I think. I'm a little concerned about stuff. No, he gets it. He gets it. He gets it. He's just having a good time. Remember Spitfire. I like it. Okay. Please don't call my boss a Spitfire. Now, listen, I, I, I want to ask about some features. Oh, okay. Um, are you all business, or is it just that suit? <laughs> uh, I'm not business. So, uh, didn't expect to get such a direct uh, answer to my question. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we're going to have a bit of the old banter. <clears throat> the windshield wipers? Okay, windshield wipers. Not okay. an euphemism. The windshield wipers are automatically activated if there's any rain at all. There's sensors. Um, windshield wipers, go! If you have any further questions, just go to Ford.com. You can find any of the information you need Terrific. there. Terrific. Right? Can't, can't, so can't find the uh, answers to the human heart. The question's inside it, I mean. <laughs> or can you? I don't know. I haven't been to the website. To do that kind of work takes a lot of credit in contract. Because you can write it in a job. Or manage. And Jim Farley just kind of looked and said, Oh, that was the response. <laughs> But uh, he quickly got on board. He said, 
but we were actually on a different playing field. We had to train the dealers. A lot of things. The dealers are not used to having fiesta agents walking to their dealership. <laughs> if you leave it to the dealers, it would be, you have to train them about these new consumers, how they are, what kind of, they will have done all their research. They will have, they will have watched these crazy things going on. So it, was, it was a big, big, underneath it, there was a lot of activities taking place. So, yeah. yeah, so it, it seems to me that the transformation of the public sector into the corporate brand is a one that consumers really love happened at much more of a product level. Um, without, without the product, there's no promise. You know, I could otherwise talk about everything. The product had to be there. And that's why, remember, so far we haven't made a promise. All we have done is said, drive one. So let me finish my story. Okay, go ahead. Okay, well, that's so, but my questions are that if, um, if you had had more control, like where you start buying time for those new products to Because the products were coming in. Yeah. Where we started in 07, 08, and where we knew we would be in 11, 12, and 13. So it was a four year plan effort. And one of the things I'm going to talk about is we knew exactly where we were going. So there was, that makes a big difference. It wasn't, let's try this, let's try that. We had so many excellent products, some competitive products, and some not so competitive products. The own product, the cycle plan is to run up. And we knew, however, that in 10, Focus would come, 11, Forest would come, Mustang would come. So we were planning all the way through. So in retrospect, then, if the product development for Focus has been much shorter, would you have wanted to invest less time in the corporate brand? It takes its time. You know, the car developed, it's a very intricate product. You know, if it, we could get it down to, and we've got it down to almost three years, and that is very fast. It really, look, okay, there are two kinds of product developed. One is what we call just a face. I've changed the grill, I've changed the engine. Those take six months, minimum, to a year. Then there's all new product. It takes at least three years. You go to a whole new engine. Whole new frame. I'm changing the frame. I'm changing the. Takes between product development and setting up a plan. Because you're retooling the whole plan. Three years is as fast as we can go. I haven't seen anyone do it faster yet. I'm sure somebody will come up with a better way and make it. Go. It takes a. You know, starting with a clay, basically, you keep a drawing. You can do this. And this is how it will go. I was just wondering if you, if you felt like you needed that initial front end to gain <coughs> consumer trust at a corporate level. And to okay, the point you where know, I would have loved to have had the, if the products. I that? think if the product stream would have come sooner, we would have been more aggressive. Yeah. And we, took, uh, we had to take. That's where I think Jim was so smart. Because the temptation is to make a promise ahead of the product. You know, that's the, why not tell the people what's coming? People are not buying what's coming. People are buying now. And that temptation was there. We knew the new explorer was coming. We knew the new escape was coming. These are phenomenal products. But we said, no, let's, we have to get our house in order. Let's make sure we do the basics right. Yes. So maybe you could discuss, in organizational terms, the relationship between Team Detroit and Ford's marketing department and other divisions in Ford. What's the division of labor? How do you collaborate with them? Um, it's, okay. it's one team. We are right across from each other, the offices. Um, let me give you another example. Ford wanted to have a board meeting. And I got a call from Bill Ford's office. That was the best statement about partnership. He said, we're going to have a marketing discussion with the board meeting. Jim is recommending we have the meeting of two. That was the first time I played the ballet for the board members. It was a great honor when you think about the Ford board coming and meeting the team Detroit for a day. So that's the partnership <coughs> that we have. I just you may have finished the I'm sorry, let me come to you. I went to Brazil and I didn't realize what I was doing with the Brazilian. CEO was sitting for CEO and he said, 
why are you making the product presentation? <laughs> I didn't think about it, but Jim told me to do it. And, I, and he said, you know all these products? I said, yeah, that's, that's kind of good. He said, I've never seen an agency do that. So the partnership is deep, and when it works, we are really one team. Of course, you can see the difference in the sense uh, between the engines and all that kind of stuff. Do you, do you have a role in things like product development? And we, they keep us posted. We, well, there's a whole group of us who works in their bank product. They're more research people. There's a whole group working. Even I don't know what they're doing because that's the contractual agreement. They need a 10 year product. Because remember, product type just takes a long time. So they're into 10 year advanced product development. I know what's definitely coming. I don't know exactly what they're thinking. I'm sorry. So, I'm curious um, about Team Detroit and about how that works. It reminds me of um, some IBM's arrangement with the London Abbey partner mm -hmm. um, And I'm curious, from your point of view, what the sort of necessary components, like what are the key success factors to having that sort of collaboration uh, among all those different partners? I think the two two things which we need. One thing is a commitment at the senior level. That's really important because I get things myself as the as the PL manager for the PT in this business. And if I get greedy, I say, no, I'm not gonna give this to them, I'm gonna just keep it in house. It improves my bonus, if you will. Then, so why should I give it to even in WPP company, forget going outside. So that's the first an honest commitment is very critical. The second thing, you have to have talent. If you don't have talent, it doesn't matter how a commitment you to make. And the third thing, in my case, I had full support from WPP management. I to go outside WPP occasionally when I would try and say, Emily, we want you to work on this project, and you don't work for WPP. So we had all three levels working, and I, I can honestly tell you, when we are at our best, everything is clicking. And there are bad days when we forget our mission. And that's when I feel terrible because what would a company deserve the best for us? They treat us like bosses. And uh, if we forget that simple thing, we will quickly become a vendor. At the end of the day, the difference is a fine line. So one more question. Uh, so just, just to give you some time, so you have five minutes left, okay. and we'll take a break. But if you have time, then after the 10 minute break, I'd like you to stay for 15 minutes if you can. Okay. Because we didn't touch on the lealeship aspects, you know, more okay. generally, if we wait. But I want you to finish your thoughts. Let me just quickly yeah. finish the yeah. presentation, because what next? <coughs> so I won, like I said, was not a real grand promise. It was an invitation to be part of the different family. So we uh, went. To the next level. This was going on for two years simultaneously. This was not an easy project. I have to say, what is important to the company all about? We had now quality products. We knew the next 10 years of product life was phenomenal. We had the consumer support. We had the people looking at us, our consideration had gone up. And, and the products, were, like I said, were superb. And the CEO, Alan, who is our brand manager, as I call him, was now pushing for it, saying, what is, what is it all about? Do you remember this thing, good product, great business, good for the world, better world? And he wanted to capture that, because that's where Ford was the company was. We read all of Henry Ford's write-ups, books, you name it, to search for what is the bottom of Ford Motor Company, when it's at its best. So we know when it's at its worst, the product is suffering, the quality is down. But when we are at our best, what do we do? And uh, this is what we came up with. It's very simple. It's not in launch. So, but it's more bigger for it. It's very simple. Anyone can understand it. We're taking it to the employees or something like that. The viewers. And again, if you hear the stories of uh, when uh, last year when Bangkok flooded, production of Rangers was put on hold because everything, uh, you know, the product, the parts couldn't 
an amazing number of Ford suppliers. They were looking at how we were going to work. They went into the factory where the snakes were around them, you know, the flooding, the flooding of all kinds of things, to bring back some of the dials. And that can only happen when you have that spirit of go further. It's, this is more than just selling a car. And this is what Alan is all about. And it's called, we're going to do our best. We're not going to stop. And it's, if you look at the Ford's community activities, the Ford dealers involved in the community, it's been happening around the world. And that's the simple line we're going to, that's the promise, if you will. It's a very difficult promise for them. This is not saying I'm going to be the best minds for the other It's easy. But then I focused on one attribute. This is as a company, we're going to do it. <coughs> and hopefully, we Ford will live up to it. And have you tested that? Because Avis has something like we try hard. We try right? hard. So it's a similar kind of thing. This is a it, it is. We tested it, but at the end of the day, when you make a promise like that, it's the employees. And there was just euphoria when we brought this up. And it's very much in sync with. It was an old ad which I could travel to the big wall. It says the Ford building the highways for the future. This is why Henry Ford. And he said, that's what it is. We are committed. And if you read what how Bill Ford is committed to the environment, Alan's committed to giving back to the society. Engineers commitment to developing products that are better than best. And they don't succeed in any, but it's when you pick up the attitude and they succeed. And this is so to round up the story, I said, first of all, you know where you're going. When Jim came with that force of saying, you're all agreed now. This is what we're gonna do. We studied the data, we know where we're going. But without that, everything else falls apart. But you couldn't do Doug as an offhand thing. When you do Doug as a one-off, it's dangerous. Because it could be serious damage. When you do a PSA campaign where you could give the product without knowing where you're going, it could play havoc. Because the product are control very fast in today's world. So we need exactly what we're doing with a four year plan. And then you have champions like Alan and Jim and Mark Field who just said, we're going to do it, we're going to take the risk. And a committed team, which you were a part of it. A lot of trust amongst each other because when you show doubt, I don't know if you sweat. You go to the CEO and say, We're going to do this. After all the money we pay you, this is what I get. <laughs> Doug, <laughs> that's my face to the consumer. <laughs> so it took six a lot of trust. We need to be part of the mission. Finding the product is critical. You, you have to be part of the risks. And there are lots of things we can do. That's the story, Ford story of the last five years. And hopefully I'm delighted to be part of it. And uh, I started by asking you where are you working. Make sure you're working where you're going to have some fun. It's not just about money. Thank you. Thank you.